This video is about a swamp. There's a thing called the ink swamp here in Japan. In Japanese is inku numa. And it basically means like ink fever where you're just crazy about messing with fountain pen inks. A company called Bungu Joshi Haku, which is loosely translated to Young Ladies Stationery Expo, had put on an ink show the last two years. Both of these had been the mother of all <laughs> ink shows. I'll put the links to the videos I did on them in the upper right hand corner here. But this year's show was called the Ink and Deco or Decoration Show and it wasn't like the ones previously. It was more like a stationary show, which is not a bad thing, but it didn't have the huge selection of inks we've had before. I complained bitterly to my friends about the lack of ink and how I didn't like the change and yet I managed to get seven bottles of ink and a bunch of paper and a bunch of other kind of fun things. So I'll just show you some of the highlights of what I got and I'll also at the end of the video announce the winners of the green and orange swipe and I also have two new giveaways from the stuff from the show. Actually for me the most exciting thing about the show this year is that it was held in the Odaku department store instead of a giant like conference warehouse outside of town. The Odaku department store is in Shinjuku station which is the busiest train station in the world. And the really cool thing was that it was advertised in the Odaku department store and here you can see like there's Tiffany's here in the department store and if you look down here it's the uh, advertisement for the show. It made me strangely proud that it was advertised in this very public and professional way. Like many of the shows now, they sold advance tickets and they metered the people in by number and this is about as crowded as it got and of course everybody was wearing masks pretty much well which is the norm here in Japan. They had three show inks that sold out very quickly but I was able to snag one which is the Night Cafe Deep Blue. I don't know what was cafe about it but it's a deep blue in a fairly wet ink but it helped me discover something about paper later on in the video. There was cute stationery like this little notebook with ink bottles on it, glass pen stickers, and washi tape with ink bottles on them too. A nice development is that more paper companies are selling blotting paper. The two on the right, the printed ones, are from Kamiterior and they've got these really cool prints on them. And then on the one on the left is from Sakaya paper, which is just a plain white blotting paper. They're all A5 size, which is perfect because you can cut them down for anything that's smaller. These are perfect for journals where you need to close it really quickly and, and your ink isn't dry and you can just pop it in there. It takes care of it. All of my journals have uh, blotting paper in them. Kami Terrier brought a bunch of these little notepads that had 10 different kinds of paper in them. And they were stacked so that when you turned them on the side, it looked like some kind of food. Like this one is supposed to look like a sandwich. So you have like white bread, ham and cheese and lettuce and tomato in there. This one is called cream soda, which is a popular kind of sweet float drink. And it's made of like this green fizzy soda. And then you have cream on top of it and then a cherry. And that's what's reflected in these colors. I used a Pilot Custom Heritage SE with Sailor Sailor ink as a kind of normal testing pen. And I tried out 28 different kinds of paper I got there at the show and not a single one of them feathered or bled through. Which makes me think that Mont Blanc and Moleskine are both actively trying to make not fountain pen friendly paper. And some of them were incredibly textured paper. And yet with a normal fountain pen they didn't feather or bleed through. 
Sakaya Paper was there, which is the distributor for Tomoa River. And when you went to go get some Tomoa River from them, they made it really clear that it was their old paper, which I thought was kind of funny. These are their special edition red and blue A5 size notebooks with a grid pattern. One of the problems with the whole old Tomoa River, new Tomoa River brouhaha is that it was easy for me to just pick paper before I just used Tomoa River. But now there's like 90 gajillion types of paper that everybody talks about and I'm getting a little bit overwhelmed. The paper hunter, otherwise known as Jacob, was at the Sakaya table grilling them about Tomoa River and their new paper called Idoful. <laughs> Idoful is a combination of the word in Japanese, Ido, which means color, and full is from the word colorful in English. Supposedly, this is supposed to make color kind of show up really bright or pop. Jacob did extensive testing on this paper, because of course he did, and claims this paper is very much like Cosmo Air Light. I found that it had the same sponginess that Cosmo Air Light has, and I tested the inks I bought against Cosmo Air Light, Edo Full, and Claire Fontaine. I also found that compared to Cosmo Air Light, both of them had a really strong showing of color. It popped. And both of them compared to Claire Fontaine definitely showed the color brighter. I don't particularly like the sponginess of Cosmo Air Light, but something I found is if you use a very fine nib, like this is a Bacchus Predator nib, and a wet ink, all of a sudden the sponginess goes away. That was true for Idoful, Cosmo Air Light, and even Claire Fontaine, which I feel like sometimes has too much of like a coating. This is nice for me because it opens back up Claire Fontaine for me and I really like a lot of their notebooks. Rubinato was there with all their calligraphy stuff, inks, and pens. They tend to be at about every show we have here in Tokyo. The nice thing about these inks is they have beautiful wax caps on them along with handwritten looking labels. It's a lovely straightforward violet purple color. The nice thing is they make their wax seals on their cap so that you can unscrew the cap and not like break the wax part which I know I would do just really, <laughs> a really bad job on it. Nagasawa has a new line of inks called Anomatope. It's a play on the English word Anomanopia. For instance, this ink is Puka Puka. The other one I bought is called Kasha Kasha. Talking to the salesperson about these inks is a bit of a surreal experience as we're using all these onomatopoetic words. <laughs> it does have an interesting box and when you open it, it kind of flowers open before you pull out the ink bottle. This is Puka Puka on Tomoa River. And this is Kasha Kasha on the new paper Edoful. An interesting ink possibly for artists is Big Purple Butterfly from the Taiwan Ink Company. It's one of those inks that after you write with it, if you add water to it, a lot of different colors come out, like a little bit of green, blue, and pink. Here it is on Edo full paper. It has a bit of a green sheen on Tomoa River. And it really looks just fantastic when you add water to it, all the different colors that come out. And you can see some of that on its chromatography. Tag Stationery Store came with several interesting things, most which were sold out. This one is called Light Ink Moon. There's also another one called Light 
ink sun with three different other colors. It's in a beautiful triangular box with like vellum paper around the outside. What caught my attention, it says, contains glitter 5% with glue suitable for glitter. Yikes! Inside the triangular box is three bottles of ink with eyedroppers and beautiful bamboo collars. If you look at Tag Stationery Store's website, it's all minimalistic looking with whites and grays. And the guys are all super hip with skinny jeans and white collared shirts and Harry Potter glasses and gray beanies. So I asked him about the ink and it's only for glass pens and dip pens or like calligraphy pens. And I asked him about whether or not you could put it in a fountain pen and he's like, don't put it in a fountain pen. So I asked him about the glitter and he's like, it's 5% glitter. And then I said, I have these really inexpensive Chinese fountain pens. And he's like, don't put it in a fountain pen. So I asked him why there's like glue in the ink. He said, it's an adhesive and you can thin it out with water. I asked him why there's eyedroppers and he said, it's just another way to apply it to your calligraphy pen or glass pen. And he added, don't put it in a fountain pen. You know where this is going, right? I put it in an old Pen BBS magnetic filler where the magnet doesn't work anymore and a sailor compass. The ink never made it through the feed on the Pen BBS pen and I never got to write with it. But I wrote with the sailor compass and it wrote just great. I didn't leave the ink inside of the pen any longer than maybe about an hour and a half and then cleaned it right away and it cleaned spick and span. Here I'm using the eyedropper to put it on my glass pen and again it wrote beautifully and I left the ink on several glass pens till it completely dried out because I wanted to see if I could get it out easily from the glass pens and they all cleaned up really well. Here I'm using a glass puddle and I put the ink in there to write with and it wrote just fine but I can kind of see the wisdom of the eyedropper because you can always shake the ink bottle up really well and then suck some ink into the eyedropper. In the uh, ink puddle you kind of have to stir it around. It dries to a nice glittery finish, but I know you're thinking, why would you want to use this touchy ink? Well, most glitter inks, when you rub them after they dry, the glitter will kind of rub off, even if it's just a little bit, but most of them do. But this one just doesn't budge. So that might be useful in some certain situations. This is called stained glass stamp, but if you look at it, it has a ink bottle on one and a nib. They're pretty small and I thought they were pretty cute. Here's the ink bottle one. As you can see, they're pretty small. So to test them out, Nagasawa sells these stamp pads that you can put fountain pen ink in. You just dropper the ink onto that blank pad there and you can even like mix colors. Here's the replaceable pad. There's a plastic liner so your ink doesn't trash the case. And you can buy refill pads. They come in packs of three with an extra plastic liner. Here I'm dropping the Rubinato Violet ink on there. And here's the stamp. I wanted to try a traditional Iron Gall ink on this and the ink I used was from Ann Story. And as you can see, it got pretty funky. But it actually worked if you just like stamped it in the middle there. So I changed out the pad and you just pull the little spongy thing out and leave the plastic tray in. Then I thought I would try that tremendous document blue for a permanent ink for those of you that kind of maybe want to do a water wash or something. And it looks like these darker colors show up a lot better. And then I just brushed water over them with a paintbrush. It's the Datramentus on the left and the Iron Gall on the right. And you can see there's a little bit of lift off.
I like shopping, so I shopped for two giveaways from this show. So we've got two A4 size loose sheets of the old Tomoe River paper and two of their A5 size special edition little journals and they're in the grid pad. You can either choose blue or red since I have two of each. A sheet of stickers that are fountain pens. Nagasawa fountain pen blank ink stamp pad and the refills that go with them. And the little box set that has four stamps on them, two of like stained glass and then one of a ink bottle and one of a nib. The Nagasawa washi tape that has Nagasawa bottles of ink on it. So you have two chances to win. Just go over to my Instagram account, follow, and put any kind of comment down. And I'll use a random comment picker to pick two winners. Yeah, this picture doesn't show the Tomo River loose sheets. I just forgot it. I'm fasting right now, so I'll be putting out a video next week on fasting. So I'll announce the winners to this giveaway on the video after the fasting video. The winner for the two different colors of swipes is T-Space Full Stop and Zen and Ink on Instagram. Please contact me on messages on IG and whoever contacts me first can pick the color. Congratulations. And if you got anything out of this video, I'd appreciate it if you gave me a like or subscribe. Thanks.